Yo, man, could you be wilding here listening to Mac Miller and Juicy J, yo? <laughs> okay, so it's FapparatorNYC.com. Poor Tops would just listen to Mac Miller, Juicy J, Lucky Bitch. We can't say bitch on here, so we, I, I'm supposed to say Lucky Biatch. Sometimes. You think, do you think the word biatch is, is like, you know, is timeless? I don't think you can say either way. Biatch? I don't think you use anybody. Yeah, either. come closer. Um, Biatch. Bitch. This doesn't sound right it coming out from yeah, Chris I don't Frost. Think I, I don't think I can I say think that. you can only get away with it, like, maybe in the West Coast. I think I've said bitch maybe three times, and that was, like, in the last two months. Okay, so you're against cursing. Nah, I, I don't know. It's just like, if you call, like, that's like a word, like, you fucking, oh, can I do that? That's okay. Yeah, might as well, because you almost You, you bluffing bitch, like, like that's just, that's really hurtful. You know? Yeah, it is hurtful. To anybody, any gender, like, that's fighting words. Yeah, it is. So, I don't know. so that's it's definitely a fight in your blood. Non-confrontation. I don't know, man. Okay, so we have Chris Faust. Yep. I'm saying your name right. I used yes. to call you Chris Faust. You can say that too. Faust is cool. Faust, Faust. But that's not your original rapping name. Your original rapping name was Prince at a point in time. Yeah, it was Prince. And I saw there was a video that you were explaining the the, the reason for the name change. Yeah. It was very interesting. Can you can you um, just give an explanation about that? It was just like at that particular time. Um, I think on a music level, on a music level, all of the uh, uh, I guess artists that I was around, you know, that that wasn't the person that I was trying to portray, you know, initially, you know, print was just a, a pseudonym that I picked up just because, uh, something that my father told me, you know, it's, 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 the whole thing is blueprint, but it was just print for short, and, um, it was just like anything that's true in life is always in black and white, it's always in the print, so I kind of ran with that, but then, uh, as the, you know, as my career went on and, you know, things started picking up, um, I felt like print, he really couldn't, go to that next level, you know, he became, you know, kind of saturated in this kind of like, uh, uh, super, I guess, um, rapidy rap, if you want to call it, like, mm -hmm. like, like, section, that's not who I, I was, that's not who I wanted to be. Okay, and since you actually changed your name to Chris Faust, you dropped three re three releases, you have Comic Books Unlimited, yeah. then you have Faust, yes. and now you just have Villains, well, issue one. Yeah. So there's going to be three versions. Yeah, because what happened was when I was recording Villain, Villain was just a transition from Faust. Faust was my debut album, like, you know, fully mastered, fully mixed project that you know, I put a lot into, and that's why it's so long. And um, what happens was, you know, uh, six, seven months later, I'm like, all right, what do I want to do now? And then my fans, like, they really like the whole comic book concept, kind of putting those two together and not making, like, this cliche, what you would expect from a person that would rap about comic books about. You know, it wasn't convoluted with, like, you know, uh, yeah, you know, I guess the, the nerdy, I guess, part of it. Mm -hmm. I just made songs and I used some comic book, like, quotes and movies to, like, kind of tell that story. So I recorded, like, 30 records or so. Yeah. And... Uh, my manager and a lot of friends, they, they tell me, like, yo, you give out so much music. So I, I split it up into three projects instead of mm -hmm. instead of one. Because so. on Comic Books Unlimited, you, every character, every feature that you had on there was yeah. uh, a superhero or whatever. Yeah. So villain is also, so they're, you're going to be an evil villain. This time. Everybody's on the project, that they're villains, you know. So, so who, which villain are you on? on I'm, I'm Dr. Faust. Dr. Faust is, uh, ironically. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know he was a character until like I started doing research and So since you're a big comic book guy, like what is your favorite comic book? Um, wow. I'm I'm really just a fan of like D C, like in general. No Marvel? Uh, Marvel is cool but for me like I, you can't just dive in anywhere in Marvel, like you you get lost. You mm -hmm. know, all of the lines like they, they overlap each other and there's different stuff. I, I can't really you know, if I'm you know, for example, if I'm reading Wolverine, like how can I read a storyline on Wolverine but he's in the Dark Avengers or the Avengers and then like how is he jumping like how is he how does he have a main storyline? It doesn't make any sense. But when you read Green Lantern and you read Green Lantern Corpse and you read uh um you got Green Lantern, Green Lantern Corpse and there's another one. Um it's a bunch of them. Yeah. They all they all they all then focus they have on infinite each other. earths, then yeah. they have all this other stuff because But it's not it's not so confusing because they focus on one thing at a time. You mm. know? I think the the biggest thing right now with Marvel is the X Men versus the Avengers kind of like uh battle that they have and so that's pretty cool i kind of got into that a little bit so how do you feel like like dc and movies and stuff like the only successful one that they have is like right now is like batman as of late <sighs> i mean yeah like i think they're gonna get it you know my marvel the marvel movies suck though like some of them but how do you, but the really, avengers, really, avengers actually looks like it's gonna be good it though. doesn't look hopefully good, it looks like Sometimes. it's a lot of it's gonna be a whole bunch of really corny ones okay 
So that was da Daily Bugle by Chris Faust. Chris Faust. And we were talking about films, and you were talking about a film in your film head or whatever. Yeah. And I realized that you just really started doing a bunch of films yourself. Like, you filmed, yeah. like, Faust films or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so how did you really start getting into that? Um, I mean, I guess, like, the I guess the best answer I could give is, like, you know, a lot of these guys were just charging way too much for, you know, in such a saturated community of, of art that we have now. Like, um, I don't feel... Like you, you do have to pay your dues, but a lot of a lot of these new directors and stuff, they don't have a resume to be charging these ridiculous amounts. So I used to just get really frustrated with, you know, some guy that I've known for five years, and he just picked up a camera and he's charging me a thousand plus dollars to shoot a video that he doesn't really know how to edit. So I just said, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a teach myself. So I started directing like little films, and then, uh, you know, I'm still getting better at it. It's still so much, it's so so crazy. I was at a a video shoot uh this past weekend. I still have no idea what I'm doing, but you know I'm I'm definitely gonna get better. It's it's, it's a passion of mine. It's, it's so you're gonna just gonna be double timing it. You're gonna be rapping. And you're also um, be... I mean, well, like like I said, it, it's it's cool because I like movies. So um, I don't I don't necessarily have to be in all my videos. I don't I don't necessarily like like to be in my videos. Mm -hmm. You know, I like to tell a story. Yeah, because I think that's the future now. Because I think a lot of rap music videos are just boring. So now yeah. they're just gonna basically you know have like something just play out and your music be over it. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan of, like, alternative rock, and their videos are always, like, some ill story. Like, um, one of my favorite videos of all time is P.O.D.'s uh, I'm Alive. Mm -hmm. And, like, I don't know, whenever I'm making a video, I, that's, like, the video that I want to make when I, when I, like, get a situation. Where like, I, the rock videos are way better than yeah, the rap video. Like, rap video, like, rap is very limited sometimes. It's like, you know, performance scene, chain, big butt, chain, performance scene, car, mm -hmm. video. Gritty, shake the camera a little bit video okay so back to your music not not your directed career let's get back <laughs> to the music okay so your constant collaborators like collaborators i realize is out of sight sonny jones who's also your brother-in-law yeah and um abby also Ibi. am i, am I saying his name it's right Ibi. Ibi. everybody always say abby i know i'll be messing up man i'll be messing <laughs> up so what's up with these all these collaborations like a lot of your products have a bunch of collaborations yeah i mean you know it's so crazy because before i started like doing performance music for myself like you know, a lot of the artists that, that you hear me with like I put them on like their first stages you know mm -hmm. I, I booked them for gigs and things like that so um with that I developed a lot of friendships so you know it's just like that organic music making I don't really make any any of the collaborations I don't call and like yo come do this collaboration or something mm -hmm. like that it's like it's a track that I hear and I know that they're going to sound great on it so I, I just hit them up and, and it just happens you know organically so um I just love working with people, man. Like, I love it. I think it's great. I don't think people do it enough. You know, I just I just love the different sounds and the different styles and the different places that they're from and the accents. I, I love it. So, I, one song I got to talk to you about is, like, Cuffin' Season. Like, <laughs> I, you dropped the video for that. I was like, yo, where's this song going to end up? <laughs> it's, I, it's, yo, that song was, I, yo, me and Coco was just in the studio chilling. And she was like, yo, you want to do a record? I was like, I don't, I don't have nothing better to do. So we do, we play some beats, and then like she started doing like this Billie Holiday kind of like melody, like to the to the cuffing season uh, instrumental. And I was like, yeah, that's it right there. Let's rock out. And we just did it that same day. And um, we just didn't do it. We just put it in the talk. It wasn't like for no reason. And then like I had did some visuals, and th they just matched up. And I just put them together. And then that was yeah, that song's mad hard. And I was like, hey, where's this song gonna end up? Because yeah. Like, Coco Siraj really did her thing on the record. Yeah. Because she said, like, I was playing it for my homeboy. He was like, is this a sample? I was like, nah. <laughs> and you guys really work really good together. Yeah. That's so I, I got to put you on the spot, yo. Because I think at Sato's Party House, like, when I first saw you do a performance with your band, Good Day, Good Night, I think yeah. you did a song called Extraordinary. Ma I can't find oh, it. Oh, yeah. That's because <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm working on my next album now. Um, Like I said, I record. I'm like, I, I want to be like Pac as far as like recording is concerned where it's like there's so much material that's just around you know you have so much to pick from so that record was supposedly supposed to be the um the first single to Faust yeah and then like um we didn't finish the uh the mixing and the production on it so we just kind of left it in the cut and then we finished it and it was too late so it's still there it'll come out on one of the I think albums. you're a jerk man you just be previewing the song and I'm like where is this song gonna end up I do but I, I, I love it I love the fact that people you know pay attention so I respect that like you know cats like oh you know I was always you know what I used to remember albums where uh, you would hear like an interlude for like 30 seconds and you'd yeah. be like that's not the song where's the song this is so crazy so I kind of pride myself on, on doing that too so. yeah man that's jerk that jerk on C.com yeah. we're chilling with Vals 
Yep. We're talking about a lot of different things. Yes. Now we could actually put them on the air. We were talking about the Tupac hologram and how you were feeling about that. It's awesome. Like, I think it's going to really um, uh, take technology and music to a whole another level. Like, uh, you know, just as far as, like, what we're able to do with performance art, you know, think about the future. Maybe we'll have panels in our house where we could watch concerts or, you know, like, in, in total 3D you know, real life imagery. That'd be that'd be crazy. So there's gonna be a Chris Faust hologram very soon. I mean, I might like make holograms and like not perform anymore and just have the hologram <laughs> perform. Do all my performances at home and just put the hologram on tour. Like I heard, like the estimated price for it is like around maybe a hundred thousand to four hundred thousand. Which is not. Un- that's actually pretty reasonable. That is yeah. pretty reasonable because the a lot of people are saying it would cost ten million dollars. Exactly. Like, ten million dollars for that though. I mean, it was crazy. It was insane. It was very surreal. That was the talk of Twitter. It was the talk of Coachella. I mean, think about it. Hail Mary was never performed. You gotta understand, people from that... People don't even know who Tupac is. Like, a lot of the youth, you know, they understand, like, oh, Tupac is the dopest. But they don't really... They weren't, they weren't there. So I remember when Hail Mary came out, and he wasn't even in the video. And then, like, you know, he never got a chance to perform that live. And then, like, mm-hmm. for them to do that was, was big, you know. And, you know, it was, it was big, man. That was big. Okay, so back to Chris Bells. Okay, so... Good morning, good night. That's the name of your band. Good day, good night. Good day, good night. Good morning, good night. <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of, kind of, I'm kind of tired. Okay. Yes. Good day, good night. Yes, that is. Yes, I had to correct myself. I didn't want to. I didn't want to mess it up. So you were talking about that. You do have a project, and you're just chilling on that. Yeah, we um we did the the, the Converse Rubber Tracks actually, and uh, we recorded an entire um an entire EP there. We did all of the records. So, so these are, this is a live album? Yes, all live. Everything's live. And it's so crazy because while I was recording it, the whole the Nike was having a meeting and the whole Nike staff came in because we were like um, tracking out records and they was like, yo, this is dope. So the senior president of, of Nike like hit me up on an email to like maybe do something. So that, that should be cool. That should be something to do. That's great. You actually just were on one of the park with, with Stally. So how yeah, was that yeah. experience? Yeah, no, that was dope, man. Like, you know, he called me out. Shouts to BCG, MMG. Um... And uh, he was like, you know, he's going to be premiering a new record on um, everything new off his Savage Journey to American Dream. Everybody copped that. It actually is pretty dope. And, um, you know, he was just there kicking it. He, he rocked. And it was dope, man. I got to meet uh, uh, Roxy and Terrence and Taraj. You know, mm-hmm. from, uh, and you were saying Taraji like was actually pretty yeah, flawless. She's, she's pretty hot. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about the, the picture, <laughs> but, you know, in person, she's, she's really pretty, man. She's a really nice woman, too. So, Faust... So if you were looking for a label, like, look at that. You'll see. Watch. I put this I put this on my mom. I'm going to meet Kerry Washington. If I don't, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take on a date. I'm going to eat. I'm going to have a conversation. I don't even want to do anything with Kerry Washington. I just want to, like, breathe her air. So I want to, like, cuddle would, with her. Would you taste like, her I wanna, like, water? I would. I want to, like, lay next to her. Like, <laughs> like, lay, like, lay half on her pillow. Like, she has the whole pillow. I just want to lay on the corner. You're a very tricky guy, because I remember there was this show they used to do with Kobe Sarai. They used to call up the chicks to the stage. Oh, yeah. Yo, and I was yo like, man. It's about the ladies, man. Yeah, man. And I was like, yo, this guy does this all the time, and he picks, like, the baddest chick. Man. And then he always ends up connecting with them, yo. I, yo, because I... You know, women... I respect you. Thank you. I respect you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Women are the biggest demographic. They, uh, you know, it's funny about women, man. They have no reservations when it comes to music. They, they move how they want to move. They listen how they want to listen. I think a lot of times, a lot of cats that go to like these hip hop events, like they have this this uh, default of how they're supposed to act at the show. Yeah. Like even when I go to shows, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I two chains, whoever, like cats that I know, like big artists from Theophilus to the Out of Sight to Sally. Like when I go see them perform, like you know, Chris Casanova, Fresh Day like I'm 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 a fan and I'm not gonna front, you know, I'm gonna stand in the front and put my hands up. I pay damn near thirty dollars to come to this show. I'm not yeah, gonna man, front, you know. Even when I see y'all at the shows, y'all always enjoy especially this guy over here. He's always enjoying the show, man. Like I remember one time he put the camera down, he was supposed to be taping and he was into the yo, show. Yo, I hate poor Johnson for that, yo. We <laughs> need to do press for events. This guy poor Johnson enjoys this too much. Put the yeah, camera yeah, down. You like, know what? You gotta, you gotta enjoy. It's music, man. Like this is our soul. This is what you're getting. Our when you soul. press though, you gotta. You oh gotta yeah, definitely. When you stuff. press, you gotta do your job. So you never get. <laughs> like imagine we were you're, pre- you're, you're working just like we're working. You're performing just like we're performing. You gotta work. So. Okay, definitely. It was good to nice to have this conversation and this radio interview. Yes. So definitely, when you got something new, which is probably gonna be villain. Yeah, issue villain. Two. Uh, issue two, issue two of three, May first. Um, and then issue three of, uh, three of three which it should be the first week in June. Uh, I got some videos and some, some interview 